Why is there a rise in gang activity? It's nothing new to have gangs or gang culture. Some of America's earliest gangs date back to the 1700s, according to the Office of Justice Programs. Early immigration to the United States, according to the National Gang Center, contributed. It mentions how early European settlers experienced racial and economic friction brought on by waves of migrants from various ethnic groups. Today, the Federal Bureau of Investigations reports that there are approximately 33,000 violent street, motorcycle, and prison gangs operating in the United States. Now, let's talk about the famous Scarface Gang. Welcome back to The Crime Files. A series of violent armed robberies occurred in Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, and France as a result of the criminal organization known as the Scarface Gang, which may have originated in the Netherlands and consisted of two to six men and occasionally a woman. The gang was referred to as the Scarface Gang because one of its members dressed as Tony Montana from the 1983 American movie Scarface. For the staff of the Brinks Cash Depot in Amsterdam, Netherlands, the evening of June 29, 2011 had started out very normally. But this otherwise unremarkable evening would quickly turn into history when a team of armed robbers stole more than 12 million euros. The Scarface gang was the one who had burgled the Prince Cash Depot in the Amsterdam Bellemare that early in the morning. The robbers then committed one of Amsterdam's wildest heists, shooting at the cops and setting over 6 million euros on fire as they tried to flee. After this crime, the authorities focused on a notorious international Belgian gang, a group renowned for its well-organized armed robberies. This heist would be remembered as one of the bloodiest in history. The future of this legendary gang was unknown in the Netherlands. Will the law eventually catch up to them, or will they get away with their heinous crimes? It's thought that Belgium is where the gang first appeared. They were well known for robberies in France, the Netherlands, and even Germany, which led to their designation as a global crime enterprise. Have you ever been completely astounded by the poisoned effectiveness that robbery groups in movies exhibit? No matter how well organized you believe these fictitious gangs to be, the Scarface Gang outperforms them in so many ways. The Scarface Gang had a distinctive style of doing things that made them stand out from the competition, from superior assault rifles to quick escape vehicles. The gang operated with consistency and showed a high level of efficiency. Usually, the strategy was straightforward. The gang would blow out an entrance point to their target area to gain admission, and then use the automatic fire to disperse any resistance. They would then start spending all of the available cash. Finally, they would take off in fast cars while leaving behind hurt victims and occasionally even some of their wealth. Federal authorities subsequently learned about their strategy, and like every gang that would later meet its demise, it was their particular kind of robbery that ultimately turned them into a target for the police. So, exactly how did they carry out their crime spree? They started by stealing a BMW M5, the ideal getaway vehicle. BMWs are stylish and quick. They nearly make a heroic escape appear simple. Three days later, the gang attempted to rob a jeweler shop in Ligue, Belgium, but were unsuccessful, leading to yet another robbery the same month. Their first real robbery occurred in February 2011, when the gang attacked a gas station in Vavre, Belgium, and stole a small sum of money from a cash register. The Scarface gang attempted to loot a Walhen post office on February 28th, but were once again unsuccessful. They fired their weapons and attempted to break the window with a rock, but the window wouldn't budge, so they were forced to abandon the scene. A hotel in McLean was the target of their destruction less than two weeks later, but they were only able to escape with a meager sum of money from the cash register because the safe they were pursuing was set to a timer that they couldn't open. But, after four failed robberies, it was obvious that the gang needed to step up their game. After all, what good is being a robber if you can't pull off a successful heist? Now, if you want 12 million euros, then we'll give them to you. All you have to do is click that subscribe button. It's as easy as that. <laughs> We're kidding, of course. 
but if you're enjoying our content, do subscribe. The gang reconvened to strategize, as was to be expected. They would eventually commit increasingly violent and sophisticated crimes, giving the impression that they had mastered the art of stealing. The group resumed their robbery in grand fashion. In addition to starting to dress in upscale and trendy clothing, they also gained notoriety for using their silver BMW, which would connect many of their heists. One of the gang members was seen on security tape filling up the notorious BMW at a gas station at the beginning of April 2011. The person, who appeared to be of Mediterranean origin, had a French-speaking approach and manner that reminded me of Tony Montana's character in the film Scarface. He even had a similar hairdo. They appeared to have just left a movie set. The gang ultimately struck once more on April 4, 2011 during the risky and violent conclusion. Cash is stolen from the cash handling business in Rotterdam. Two evading staff members were seriously hurt when the robbers used explosives to enter the facility. The group then sped away from the crime scene in two cars, giving the cops a high-speed chase down the freeway. Despite the hardest efforts of law enforcement, the gang managed to avoid being apprehended. A few days later, they even set fire to their BMW M5 on a road near Brussels. But this was not a permanent disappearance. A week later, the gang struck once more at the Loomis cash handling business in Valence, France. The group adopted a similar strategy despite the fact that this was an unfamiliar area and eventually made off with 2 million euros. The gang would be kept occupied for the next two months with this money and they would probably use it again in their next heist, which would be a movie-style theft that they would eventually return in June 2011. The Brinks company was targeted by the gang on June 29, 2011, and by the end of the morning, they had taken a staggering 12 million euros from the cash handling business. The gang's prior heists were carried out in a similar manner to this robbery. Several months later, in December 2011, sources claimed that four members of the gang had been detained including one man who had been in charge of processing coupons at a grocery store and who had been in possession of the coupons since they had been reportedly stolen in April. Finally, this man would direct police to three other perpetrators who have subsequently been accused of five violent robberies across three nations. The group's final member is still missing though. Did he really die in that theft or is he still evading capture? What are your thoughts? Do comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, show your support by hitting that like, subscribe, and bell icons. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to check out our channel for more niche-related content. Thank you once again for joining, and we'll see you once again on our channel, The Crime Files.